Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be looking at optical fibres. I'm going to think about not only the science behind how they operate, but the numerous advantages associated with them. And then we'll move on to discuss something known as the refractive index. Now, optical fibres are used extensively in the field of telecommunications and medicine. And in the telecommunication field, they're used as an alternative signal carrier to copper wires in the telephone system. And they're, and they're used um, to carry digital signals in the form of light pulses over long distances. So that's just a little bit about essentially what they are doing. Let's draw one so we know what we're, we're talking about here. So we've got this, if we just draw a very simplistic sketch of an optical fibre here. What we actually have is a narrow core and then there's this, if you like, outer cladding. So I'm going to colour this or sketch this cladding in blue. So it's kind of like a, uh, not really protective, but a sort of outer layer if you like. So this optical fibre is made up of this outer cladding section. Here, and then if we just colour in, just for completeness sake, this central part here. So we'll label them. We said we've got a narrow core, and here we've got outer cladding. So this is a very basic picture of a optical fibre. Now in a separate video I discussed the phenomenon known as total internal reflection. So let's just quickly recap that because that is essentially the phenomenon that we see in this optical fibre. An optical fibre basically consists of this very thin core of high purity glass. So we can add that there. So this narrow core we'll write down is made of high purity glass and the core is covered by this second layer or cladding also made from a high purity glass but the cladding this is the key the cladding is less dense than the core and it has what is called a lower refractive index now I'm going to discuss that in more depth later in the video but the key thing is that the cladding is less dense because we wouldn't really see this phenomenon if it wasn't. So the cladding is a less dense medium. Now it's important to stress that for total internal reflection to occur, the light rays must travel from a dense medium to a less dense medium. So what you actually see is something a little, and I'll draw the light rays in red here. So if we have a light ray coming in like so, we see this kind of phenomenon. And those light rays are demonstrating what we call total internal reflection. Now, light rays passing along the core are at an angle greater than the critical angle, and so they are totally internally reflected. The surface of this high purity glass core acts like a perfect mirror, you could say, in a way, and the light rays continuously reflected along the length of the optical fibre core. So you can see that this total internal reflection is allowing us to pass this light ray all the way from essentially A to B, right down the length of that optical fibre. The cladding is often actually covered with a protective plastic buffer coating. So let's think about the advantages of using optical fibres against, let's say, copper wires. So what we're going to think about here are the advantages to using these optical fibres over copper wires. So what we're going to do is make a short list. And the first thing to mention, without doubt, is cost. 
Optical fibres are far less expensive than copper wires, quite significantly so. So in a business the size of the telecommunication industry, a cheaper option is often the more attractive option. Secondly, they have a small diameter. Now, optical fibres are thinner than copper wires and that allows more of these fibres to be bundled together in a sort of fixed section of cable. So let's think about what you would want to, to do with that essentially. Well, this means that we can have more information, so like telephone conversations or television channels, passing through the cable. So basically it's a more efficient output method. We can send more information by having more cable in a given space if you think of it like that. Now one of the key advantages of optical fibres over copper wires relates to the level of interference. So what we're going to put here for number three, we'll do it over the side here, we'll just make a note, interference, or the interference they experience rather. Electrical signals in copper wires interfere with other copper wires bundled in the same cable. As optical fibres carry light signals, however, there is no interference between the fibres bundled in the same cable. So any signal that you do get is much clearer. And the final advantage that I'm going to discuss is that of power transmission. So let's explain what I mean by that. Optical fibres require less power for transmission. That's basically it. The signal in an optical fibre is subject to much less degradation than in a copper wire. So in terms of signal boosting, we only need to boost it after a really long distance, about, um, I think it's in the region of 100 kilometres, because the signal weakens or degrades easier in copper. Boosting, we see that needs it much more often so that's typically every eight kilometers instead so signal degrades easier in copper wires less so in the optical fibers so we're needing less boosting so that's a little bit about optical fibers their structure the mode of operation essentially what I was saying about total internal reflection and some of the benefits of using them in industry now what I think we should consider is something known as the refractive index. It's something I referred to earlier. So for this part what I'll do is I sh shrink the screen just a little so I can put a few bits and bobs down underneath here. Now the first thing to note, so this is what we're going to look at now, the refractive index. So that's what we'll move on to look at. First thing to note is that the speed at which a wave travels is dependent upon the medium it travels through. So in the videos that I've made I talk about light waves passing through glass, through air, through water for example. So in each of those what I'm saying is that the light waves travel at different speeds. A number called the refractive index of a substance is basically a measure of how much the speed of a wave changes compared to the speed in what's called a reference medium. Now this could be air or even a vacuum, so a space devoid of any material at all. So let's put a formula in place, because for light waves the refractive index is calculated using this formula. So refractive index, RF refractive index is equal to the speed of light in air and that's divided by the speed of light in whatever our reference medium is. So I'll just I'll just highlight that bit there. So this little bit where I've put medium, that means our reference medium. So the RF, the refractive index, is the speed of light in air divided by the speed of light in the medium. 
Now the refractive index for glass is approximately 1.5. So this means that the speed of light in glass is approximately 1.5 times slower than the speed of light in air. Similarly, the refractive index of water is one point, I think it's about 1.33. So to have t obtained that value, if we were comparing it to the glass, we must have had a larger value for the bottom part of the formula to give a smaller number. So we had 1.5 for glass, we've got 1.33 for water. So the value for the bottom, the speed of light in the medium, must have been larger. So this implies that light rays will not be bent as much in water as they are in glass, as they are not slowed down as much in the water. And that's pretty much it. So, to recap, refractive index is a number which just tells you how much the speed of a wave changes compared to the speed in what's called the reference medium. And if we think of the structure of the optical fibre that we have in this video, you've got a core and an outer cladding. The outer cladding has a lower refractive index and that enables the light to be totally internally reflected. Okay, hope all that helps.